Welcome to the Haley Rowe Show. I'm a feel-good habits coach dedicated to helping you reach new levels of health, happiness, and high performance. Please visit www.haleyrowe.com for show notes. Let's get to it. My name is Haley Rowe. I am a habits coach for people who want to build health and success habits into their life and stick to it once and for all and be consistent and stop this whole all or nothing or I'll start again tomorrow mentality. And so I wanted to come in today to this group in particular because you guys are my faves and talk about um, how to turn negative thoughts into positive ones and how to become the kind of person who defaults to positive thoughts. I'm gonna make it pretty quick because I know you guys are busy and um, tell you a little bit about what I've done to help my clients and also myself with negative thought patterns that really hold you back. And the first thing that I want to say is this is so important because mindset, you know how they say like, oh, your health is basically based on your nutrition and that's 80% and 20% is fitness. But I really think that your success in health, in life, and whatever, 80% of it is just your mindset in and of itself. Yes, you have to take actions. Yes, you have to make good choices. But all of that becomes so much easier when you just master your mindset and you know what triggers you and what doesn't and how to handle it and how to keep yourself calm and in a focused, positive state so that you can bring your best to whatever it is that you're doing. So you kind of have to think about it as like your life depends on your thoughts because it really does. Your thoughts create your actions. They create your choices. Your choices become your habits and your habits are you. That's who you are. So uh, it is important. And if you've been telling yourself, I don't need to do any of the deep work um, having to do with thinking more positively or, you know, with my mindset, then I would like to challenge you on that and say, try to test yourself and see, um, what kind of mindset barriers you're facing. So I've been working with some clients recently and they've been saying that, you know what, if I could just master my mindset and get out of my head and stop second guessing myself and stop um, allowing myself to feel like small around other people or stop comparing myself to others, then I think this journey would be so much easier. And I was actually talking to somebody about this last night. And one thing I was telling her is, that positive that you kind of have to think about your mind as a um it's like your house and you are having people over and you have to think about negative thoughts as something like as people who are coming over uninvited like they're tr- they're banging on your door they thought you were hosting tonight and they come into your house and they're jumping on the furniture and they're not welcome and they're leaving a mess and you ha- have to look at your negative thoughts like that and you have to say okay you know what I'm in control I'm the host here I can tell them to leave or I can allow them to just keep you know breaking my stuff and jumping on the furniture and interrupting me and being annoying right so you do you are in control even though you know there are certain um you know mental things I'm not going to get into to that. But even though some people have less control, you are in control of your thoughts. And that's the first thing to know. So that could, that should really empower you and make you believe that, that you are able to address this once and for all and make it a habit to default to being more positive, seeing things, seeing the glass as um, half full instead of half empty. So the, the, what I told her first was you have to really feed your mind and entertain the positive thoughts. So when the, the, if you're thinking again, going back to the, your mind is your house kind of thing. If you're having the positive thoughts as guests, you really want to feed them. You want to do it with um, positive books. You want to do it with podcasts. You want, it's any skill you're trying to make, you have to practice it. And the same thing goes with just trying to be positive and trying to see things differently and change your perspective. Um, So one thing that I told my client to do and that we've talked about before is um, just learning how to become more aware of your thoughts and like conscious of them through things like meditation and things that quiet your mind so that you're able to be like 
more focused, but um, what I wanted, oops, sorry, hit the table. Um, but one thing I told her that she did, if she didn't want to do meditation, she could do something called heart rate variability training, which is similar to meditation, but it's a thing that you plug into uh, your phone and you put it, it, there's a thing called heart math and it's this little device that you plug into your phone. You have an app on your phone. You put this thing on your ear and you close your eyes and you breathe and you're able to see on this app in front of you if you're in a really stressed out state or if you're in a calm, relaxed state. And it will tell you based on the variability in your heart, um, in your heartbeat. So if they're, if they're like very smooth and good, then you're in that calm, coherent state. And if you're all over and jagged and going up and down, that means that you're in that fight or flight mode. And it's a great way to get feedback on if you're being, if you really truly are feeling in a positive state or if you really are in a, in a fight or flight mode and you might not even know it. So that's something that I've done in the past. But the, the reason why I'm bringing this up is not because I think everybody needs to do that. The reason is because I've done it. And what I've found is the way to immediately get yourself to drop into coherence or that positive, calm state um, is just visualizing something that makes you happy. So for me, anytime I would notice my thoughts getting all building up and I would notice myself out of coherence, I literally thought about my cat and it would just it would immediately would just be like, ding, like it would go and it gives you sound feedback. So uh, it would just tell me, Oh, you're in the calm state now. <laughs> and it would take like a few seconds. So the first tip that I'm going to give you today, I got a little off track, but the first tip I want to give you today to, to help yourself rewire your mind to be more positive is to, first off, quiet your mind more often through either things like heart math or meditation, um, just so you, you become the ruler and you know what's happening in there because a lot of people don't pay attention in the first place. Um, but also come up with something that you're going to think of that you're grateful for when you notice yourself getting really uh, taken over by your negative thoughts. So for me, my cat, a beautiful day. I don't know, but what is it for you? So if you have something that you're grateful for that you know if you visualized and you're, if you close your eyes right now with me, and just thought about it, you'd immediately get out of fight or flight mode, lower your cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and feel more positive and zen. What is that for you? Comment below, and if you're watching the replay, comment. Um, okay, so let's move on. So now I'm gonna just go over a four-part process to uh, address negative thoughts as they come up throughout your day, and you can do this these four steps anywhere at any time and so I want you to get out a little pen and paper write them down and uh, we'll we'll talk about it so the first thing is to I've kind of already touched on it articulate the thoughts articulate your most uh, con like the most consistent negative thoughts that you have on a regular basis because in order to change them you have to know what they are and I always say in order to have a breakthrough, you have to have a breakdown. So you have to know what's holding you back. And a lot of people just never pay attention. We're on autopilot all day. We're working all day. We never reflect. We don't know our barriers. So the first thing is articulate the thoughts that are holding you back. And I'm going to give you an example. So for me, um, a while ago, when I would consider myself completely owned by perfectionism, uh, I would have really irritated negative thoughts when I saw other people relaxing because that was something I never got to do. So I would get like resentful. I would be like, that person is so lazy. That person, you know, what's their problem? And I, it wasn't, it wasn't them at all, really. It was me projecting my, my like, oh, I want to be able to do that, but I don't let myself and by choice that was what was getting in the way. So that would be a thought for me that I would have to address in this exercise. The second thing, step two, is to 
give yourself not a positive affirmation because I think a lot of people talk about positive affirmations and they're like, yeah, that's the, that's the answer. And I think it annoys people because sometimes you're like, I feel like that's just a cover up. I don't fully believe it yet. And if you don't fully believe it, then it's not going to work for you. So I would say instead come up with a release statement to that thought. So for example, um, Going back to the perfectionist example that I just listed, I would say something like, I forgive myself for um, judging that person or thinking that they're lazy and instead I choose to allow myself to relax too or something. Or if you're procrastinating and you're getting really down on yourself and you think I'm such a loser because I'm always procrastinating, something you'd say as a release statement is I forgive myself for procrastinating and um, that's it. You're not saying like, I'm the most, I'm going to be the most focused person ever now. That's not the release statement. The release statement is something more like I forgive myself for procrastinating, procrastinating, sorry. And then one more example, let's say you got really angry with a person and you're mad. Uh, one thing you could do is just say, it's okay to have that feeling of anger sometimes. And by doing this, you might not think anything of it, but you're just not, you're putting it in perspective and you're not letting it own you anymore. Because if you just let it run and run and you're not doing anything proactive at all to release the feeling, the negative thought, to empower yourself, um, putting yourself in control of the thoughts, then they're just going to continue this, this whole pattern that you don't want. So the third thing that I would do and recommend to anyone that's made a huge impact on how I immediately react to things is ask yourself very powerful questions. And you guys know I'm a big fan of this because I've posted in the group little, um, like little affirmations on, or just statements that kind of come from the questions I ask myself. So for example, like how will I avoid distractions today? Or, um, what can I do? What do I have one more good choice in me? Or what's one more good choice I can make for today? You always have one more good choice in you. Um, something like what with one of my clients, actually, we talked about how she, um, this person really wanted to be more assertive at work and not feel anxiety or shy or like she's not not worthy. And so the question that we came up with for her to rewire in herself into an empowered positive state instead of a, you know, closing yourself off negative, not confident state. Uh, her question was, how can I lean in today? So whatever it is for you, you got to come up with, with something that resonates. What does excellence look like for me today? Or what, what's my best right now? Because for when you, are become when you ask yourself these powerful questions on a daily basis it's bringing you to this moment and allowing you to be flexible in your approach to habits and mindset because every day is different so when you ask yourself a powerful question each day you are going to be able to be more in control and present of your thoughts and not have negative things take over you because you're bringing yourself to the moment and asking yourself how can you be solutions oriented how can you handle this moment so one other thing uh, that I would recommend, and I have this, some of these questions written down, is how can I make the rest of my day the best of my day? So if you did let negativity uh, get in the way of something today, ask yourself, how can you make the rest of your day the best of your day? And always ask yourself, what is the worst thing that can happen? Because a lot of times, anything we judge is bad or negative, it's just because we have something to compare it to. And when... We have, you know, like, it's like everything, you can't win until you've experienced failure, right? So when you notice yourself getting all worked up about something and judging it as really bad, just know it's a part of the journey. You have to fail in order to get better. You, like I've said before, you have to have kind of a breakdown to have a breakthrough. So keep that in mind. And then the last thing that after you've, ask yourself some powerful questions, one or two that you choose, and maybe writing it down in a journal or writing it down in your phone. 
either in the morning or the evening or in your moment of weakness. Um, the last thing that you should remember is that progress, it's all about progress, not perfection. So I think the, the most powerful thing you can do, and I'm reading a book right now called The Obstacles Away by Ryan Holiday. And he talks about how the most important thing that you can do is reframe. You are 100% in control of reframing any scenario you want to think of it as the best possible thing that could have happened to you. And actually at my house, I have a, a little thing that my sister did for me. It's like a calligraphy piece of art that I hung up on my wall. And it has my little quote, or kind of like the way I see everything. And it's the statement, everything that happens to me is the best possible thing that could happen to me. And for some people, that might not make that much sense to them. But for me, I just love that quote. I always go back to it. I find it very reassuring because I always try to remember and think that the universe has our back. And, you know, everything that happens is for a reason. While you might not understand it right now, at some point it will make sense. And you could turn any tragedy or obstacle into something that you can learn from or share with others or whatever. And... Um, so the other thing that I just wanted to finish up on is, um, like, I'll give you a few reframing examples. Uh, so with one of my clients, they were talking about how they feel so guilty when they um, are so busy at work and they don't have enough time with their family and their kids and how they're wondering if they should just completely, um, t you know, step back from their position and how they just let the guilt eat at them. And what we did, we kind of worked on a reframing technique. And, and we came to the conclusion that actually working and, sh and sh showing that good example for her kids is one of the best possible things she, she could be doing. Um, and that they're going, you know, fulfill feeling fulfilled at work and feeling independent and being able to provide for her family in the long term is one of the best possible things that she can do for her kids and she should never feel guilty about that and at the same time we talked a little bit about you know work boundaries and what you what things to do differently so that she's not feeling run down or um like resentful towards her work but at the end of the day we did that reframing technique and then another uh reframing technique I kind of mentioned was like if you're a perfectionist and you resent other people who you think are lazy or not having the same high standards as you, it's just important to remember that you're choosing that yourself. You could choose to be lazy if you wanted to, or you could choose to relax if you wanted to and you can't take it out on somebody else. So those are just some examples. And the final, uh, so let's just recap the four steps. And thank you for those of you who st are sticking around and watching. Um, I don't know who you are because I'm doing it from Ecamm Live, but I am able to see that people are watching. So comment. I can see the comments, though. So if you comment, I will know you're here. Um, so the four steps, let's just recap. Articulate the thought, the negative thought. Release, uh, come up with an, a release statement. Do some interrogative, interrogative, oh my gosh, I cannot talk today. Ask yourself some powerful questions. That's step three. And number four, remember progress, not perfection. Okay. And the, the final uh, thing I want to mention is, um, oh, yes, one of my favorite things ever. Don't turn your blessings into burdens. So this comes from Elizabeth Benton, again, one of my favorite peeps, and I think that that quote is so powerful because there's a lot of times where um, we get so caught up in something right now that's really bothering us, being so overwhelmed at work or having a lot of standards for ourselves. And really, you should see your strengths and your and all the things you have going for you not as um, burdens, but as blessings. So let me know how you are going to take action after watching this video. And also, I feel like there was something else major I wanted to tell you, but I'm looking at my notes and I don't. Oh, yes. I also saw a post in the 
Yes. Okay. I also saw a post in the Facebook group how somebody was saying their June is, is tough and they're having a tough time. And it's just important to remember that everything has a season and it's okay to not have everything that you want happening all at once. It's okay to take a step back from a certain area of your life for a period of time to focus on what really needs your attention. And by allowing yourself to do that, it just frees you up so much men like positive space in your mind. And being forgiving to yourself is actually one of the best things you can do. Even though a lot of times we think if we're too nice to ourselves, we won't improve because we're not, you know, you're not challenging yourself. You're not motivating yourself. But really, negative self-talk is not helping you. It's not serving you. It's holding you back. And ask yourself, has it ever worked for you? If, if being really hard and down on yourself has, uh, it does help you get to the next level and improve your habits, I'd love to know because usually for most people, it's self-sabotage and it just is a pattern and it's not, it makes the process not fun and it makes them fall up, what they call fall off the wagon. Uh, and so the last thing that, oh, I keep saying that, sorry. Oh, and remember too, that it takes time. Everything takes time. It's just like, cause this group is focused on habits. So becoming more positive and becoming able, like better able to default to positivity, that's going to take time. It's not just going to happen once you start practicing these four steps. It's going to take day after day of consistent noticing, reflecting, practicing, um, and sharing your examples as you go in this Facebook group. It's just like having a baby. You don't just get pregnant and, and ha or you're pregnant for two weeks and you're wondering where the baby is. You know it takes nine months to have that baby. So it's with the same thing with habits. You have to nourish the habit. You have to wait it out. It might not take nine months. It might be another story, but it's the same idea of you have to grow it. You have to nurture it. You have to not expect results the day you start. Um, so always keep that in mind. Okay. I think that's actually it now. I <laughs> hope you guys are having a good day. Uh, and I will talk to you guys soon. Want to hear more shows? Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. Get your free habits guide at HaleyRow.com. And remember that any advice given on the show does not substitute for medical advice from your healthcare professional. Talk to you guys soon.